today on Deep Dive, we're going to be looking at Marvel Comics Submariner number 2. Can Namor track down Destiny by himself? Let's dive in and find out. Hello everyone, my name is Devin, also known as DH Artist, and welcome back to my Deep Dive series. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that I recently reached 200 subscribers, something I never imagined I would attain. I'm now 20% of the way closer to reaching a thousand. So whether you've been with me from the start, or you've just discovered my channel, thank you so much for your support. I'm currently in the process of making a celebratory episode, so keep an eye out for it in the near future. Today we'll be continuing the adventures of the Submariner, and if you missed my deep dive coverage of his previous issues, I'll link to them in the video description below. Even though this can be viewed on your phone or computer, try casting it onto your TV so you can really see the detail and quality of the issue. With each book, you can expect their conditions to vary. Today's issue is in nice condition, so there won't be anything to detract from the artwork. If you enjoy these types of videos and want to see more content like it, check out some of my other deep dives. I've covered issues like Wolverine number 87, West Coast Avengers number 2, Thor number 161, and Iron Man number 4, featuring a classic battle between Iron Man and the villainous Unicorn. For a complete list of my videos, visit the organized playlists on my channel. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss another issue. Submariner number 2 was published in June of 1968. Editor-in-chief was Stan Lee. Cover artists were John Buscema, Frank Giacoa, and Artie Simic. The story titled Cry Triton was written by Roy Thomas, penciled by John Buscema, inked by Frank Giacoa, and lettered by Artie Simic. The book consists of 32 pages with a cover price of 12 cents. Today's story begins as the Submariner destroys the base of Destiny, the villain who buried him under the ice and gave him amnesia many years ago. With the entrance now sealed by an avalanche, Namor returns to the water to regain full power. Suddenly he remembers a long-forgotten memory from one of his countless battles with the Fantastic Four. Realizing that Mr. Fantastic might be able to help him track down Destiny, he begins to swim towards New York City. Meanwhile, directly in his path, many nautical miles away, the villain known as Plant Man is trying to find somewhere he can work on his experiments undisturbed. But just when he finds a prime location near an island, he sights a costumed figure high above his submarine. Flying above the water is King of the Inhumans, Black Bolt, and after sighting the submarine so close to their island home, he returns to his team back on shore. Soon Gorgon and Triton fly out to observe the sub, and Triton dives into the water to get a closer look. Watching this from his close circuit TV, Plant Man readies his defenses. Some of the interesting advertising found within this issue was an ad for Joe Wider's Muscle Course Workbook. There's a full page ad for a giant reproduction horse mural. There's another full page ad for Marvel t-shirts, sweatshirts, and the Merry Marvel Marching Society. And on the back there's an ad for kids to make money and earn prizes by selling seeds. As Plant Man prepares to strike, he's caught off guard when his sensors track the Submariner approaching from the opposite direction. Hoping to play them both against each other, Plant Man pretends to command the Submariner over the loudspeaker instructing him to fight Triton. And even though Namor doesn't fall for the stunt, Triton does, and he moves to attack. Catching Namor off guard, Triton lands the first blow. Then our two undersea heroes begin to fight each other. Thank you. 
As they fight, the Submariner discovers that the Inhumans are friends of the Fantastic Four, and though he tries to get Triton to take him to them, Triton refuses. During the chaos of the battle, Namor removes Triton's saline tubes, which allow him to breathe above the surface. Meanwhile, half an ocean away, we find the once great city of Atlantis. Looking out over the shattered city is Dorma, Namor's princess, who has yet to learn what became of him since he left to fight destiny. As the people of Atlantis begin a mass exodus in search of a new home, she fears he may never return. As Dorma reluctantly boards her royal flagship, we return back to the action. Realizing that the Inhuman is struggling to breathe out of the water, Namor throws Triton back into the sea, vowing to continue fighting, but on an even playing field. With the battle resuming underwater, the forgotten plant man is now ready to strike. Suddenly, giant plant-like tentacles entangle Triton and the Submariner, and as they're pulled aboard Plant Man's vessel, they quickly realize they were tricked into fighting each other. Plant Man then ionizes the water, causing Triton and Namor to become trapped, like metals attracted by a magnet. Meanwhile, back on land, the Inhumans begin to worry when Triton doesn't return. So using his molecular energy, Black Bolt parts the waters, allowing them to quickly reach the Plant Man's vessel. But just as the Inhumans reach the sub, Plant Man activates the ship's rockets, and quickly escapes. Will Plant Man succeed to have his tentacle creatures destroy the surface world? Will Submariner and Triton remain as prisoners forever? Readers would have to wait until the next issue to find out. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive. If there's a particular issue or comic you'd like me to flip, drop it down in the comments section and I'll see if I can edit my pull box. If you enjoy these types of videos, please show your support by subscribing to my channel. As always, please consider liking and feel free to share this video. And until next time, deep divers, thanks for watching.